Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to test this reducer and we're gonna see if this reducer is applicable for the robotic arm application. Let's get started. This reducer I built one week ago. If you have not seen this video, you can find it on my YouTube channel. And these two pieces is the new pieces. I 3D printed them recently. And these pieces I'm gonna use for the test. So this piece is a support. So this reducer goes here and it's gonna be screwed with these six screws. And this is a piece which mounts here. And on these screws, we're gonna mount this arm. And afterwards, we're gonna see the torque of this arm. Look how this piece perfectly aligns with this reducer. This is so satisfying. The support is mounted, you can see. And now we can take care of this part, which goes here, instead of these eight screws. And now this part is also mounted, and uh, now we can easily see the back drivability of this uh, actuator. Now the arm is mounted over here. And the next step is going to be to mount the base of this reducer somewhere where it's going to be stable. And I have a piece for this. And this is a piece. This is a rail uh, 30 by 60 aluminum profile. I already used it in some uh, videos before. So this holes gonna go here and here. Now the motor is mounted to the quite solid uh, base and uh, we can basically soon start to measure the torque. I have this huge pieces which I'm gonna use to fix this base to the table. The base is fixed from one side and also from this side. I have the second aluminum profile which I will put here and the plate I will put here. Here I will put uh, the scale to measure the torque. I have rearranged a little bit the position of the motor, like this, this arm goes exactly at the middle of this scale. And now everything is ready for the test. In order to control the motor, I'm gonna use a Raspberry Pi again, but this time without Google Assistant, because I wanna control also the current on the motor. So the first thing I need to switch on the O drive, now the O-Drive tool. The next uh, I need to put the proper number of the pole pairs. For this motor it's uh, equal to 20. The next is number of steps uh, for the encoder. For this encoder it's 4000. And now I'm ready to do the calibration. Full calibration sequence. To do the calibration I will put the motor like this. Okay, normally the calibration is done. And now I can do the closed loop control. And now the motor holds the position. There is no play in this direction. There is a flex, but not play. But this is just because uh, this bearing is quite good. And now let's see for the backlash. For the backlash it's difficult to say because this motor does not hold well. But I think if there is a backlash it's quite uh, insignificant. Uh, the motor is super cool, 22 degrees. Now let's see how it can handle the torque. So now the current is uh, set at 10 amps. So I set the velocity limit at 5000. Set point 6000. Set point 8000. So the torque is, ooh, 2 kilos. 
So the temperature of the motor is 27 degrees and now let's test uh, 20 amps current. And it's 3.5 kilograms. And now I'm going to test 30 amps current. Position 1000, uh, position 3000, 6, 7, 7.5, 8. The plan force is 3.75 kilogram. So I think that the problem could be in the fact that I use only 24 volts and this motor needs 40 volts. So I have a solution. I'm going to use this O drive. This is 48 volt O drive instead of this one, which is 24 volts O drive. So I'm gonna dismount this one and reinstall this one. And also we're gonna change this power supply. I installed a new O drive. This is 48 volts version and my power supply it's a big one so it's uh, under the table. And now we're ready to test this reducer with the 48 volts. Let's do this. Okay, the calibration is done. The O drive in the closed uh, loop control. So we will start the test with the current limit 10 amps and the velocity limit at 5000. Let's check the temperature of the motor. The motor is cold, it's uh, 24.5 degrees. So it's 10 amps and the motor produces a force of uh, 2.1 kilogram. The power supply draw 0.4 amps at 45 volts. So I think we can say that this motor can handle 10 amps without active cooling. No problem, at least for a couple of minutes, no much of the temperature rise. And now let's test 20 amps. Set point 8000. So the force is 4.1 uh, kilos. This is way better than with the previous uh, with the previous O drive version with the previous uh, power supply. The motor is already at 32 degrees. The temperature is uh, 44 degrees. So I'm gonna add some cooling. Motor is cooled down to 26 degrees, so we can continue. And the next point is current limit of 30 amps. Set point 8000 and set point 9000. And the force is too much. Fuck. So I think I will increase this lever in order to have the lower uh, force on my uh, scale because this uh, way this works only up to five kilogram and. Uh, with the 30 amps, the force is more than 5 kg. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna attach this beam over here. Now it's quite long. Okay, let's try to do these new measurements, uh, 30 amps with the long uh, arm. And let's see if it works or if it's gonna break everything. Okay, 30 amp. But before putting the 30 amp, let's check the temperature of the motor. Yeah, 26 degrees. Set point 3000, 6000, 7000, 8000, 9000. Uh, the force is 2.8 kilograms. 56 degrees. So let's stop it before it burns. Also very interesting point that the O drive consumes the maximum current only when there is a there is a force. Meaning that for example now there is no much force on the motor and uh, the set current is 30 amps but it does not consume the 30 amps because it knows that it does not need this uh, power to hold uh, the in place. But when uh, so now the power supply gives uh, 0 0.2 amps. But now when I move it on the side, the current on the power supply is increased, it's one amp, and now it's difficult to hold it. And this movement is because the PID values is not correct, as I said. But this is nice because it's very strong, you can feel it. And now let's try to test 40 amps in this motor. And let's see if we're gonna break something or if it's gonna survive. So current limit. 40 amps go, set point 1000, 3000, 7000, 8000, 9000, it sounds bad, 
This is 3.6 kilos. Let's check the temperature. It's 47, 48, 50 degrees. 57. So I'm gonna switch it off. We have tested this reducer and I put all the essential results here on the table. And I basically divided these results on two parts. First part and second part. The first part is with the lower current. This part we measured using the short arm. And the second part for the higher currents, we measured it with the longer arm. The short arm has a length of 34 centimeters and uh, with its uh, center of mass, it gives the torque of 0.047 kilogram per meter, which should be subtracted from the measured torque. And for the long arm, it has this length, this uh, mass uh, for the center of mass, and this gives this value, which also should be subtracted from the final torque value. So, for the 10 amps, the force which was applied uh, by the arm is uh, 2.1 kilogram and uh, minus this uh, coefficient and gives this gives of the torque of 0.67 kilogram per meter. And the theoretical torque, taking into account that reduction ratio is 8, is equal to 0.66 kilogram per meter. So this is very close one to another. Also, with uh, this uh, low current, uh, the temperature of the motor is stays quite stable and there is the rise of the temperature of only 4 degrees in almost 4 minutes, which is quite slow. Power supply, which supplies uh, or drive, uses the current of 0.4 amps times 45 volts, so it's only use 80 watts. So it means that uh, this system, motor plus reducer, plus a driver as a driver, it consumes 80 watts for the 0.67 kilogram per meter torque. For the 20 amps, the torque, the measured torque is 1.35 kilogram per meter. And uh, this is uh, in a good agreement again with the theoretical torque of 1.32 kilogram per meter. The power supply in this case consume 45 watts. The motor heats a little bit. It's uh, the temperature rise is 18 degrees in two minutes. All this temperature rise is without any cooling, without any active cooling. And uh, now the two other measurements with the higher current. So the 30 amps give us the torque of 1.95 kilogram per meter. This is uh, just below the theoretical torque. And the power supply in this case consume 90 watts. And uh, the temperature is rise more significantly and uh, the temperature rise is 30 degrees in one minute, which is still possible to use. For the operation at 40 amps, the reducer produce the torque uh, very high. It's 2.58 kilogram per meter, which is very nice. It's again just below the theoretical torque and the power supply consumes 153 watts. The heating is quite significant and the motor heat up 19 degrees in uh, half a minute. So it means that this current also can be used, but without active cooling, you should uh, use this current as a peak uh, current for the short time. In my opinion, this gearbox is a very good gearbox even for the robotic arm. It has almost zero backlash very low play, it's very powerful. Probably it's better to add the active cooling to this uh, gearbox. The only thing in which I'm not sure is the gears, because this gears is made out of plastic and I'm not sure how long they're gonna last. Probably if uh, you print these gears from nylon or some other very tough materials, probably it's gonna be better and probably they're gonna last longer. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you're new to my channel, please consider to subscribe to my channel. And also I would like to say a huge thank you to my Patreons. Here are their names. Thanks to them I built this project and thanks to them I will continue with the projects like this one. And together we're gonna build a super nice robotic arm. If you would like to support my channel, please consider to support me via PayPal or on my Patreon webpage. All the links in the description. See you next time.